Yeah, if we're all seated, I see no problem in starting a minute early, if that's okay. Um, welcome everybody to the West Liberty City Council meeting. It is September 6, 2022. Um, present are council members uh, Ashley Smith. Right here. Yes. Dana Mark yes. Dana Dominguez here. <laughs> Kara McDern here. And Council Member Omar Martinez will be joining us via um, Zoom here when he is able. He is traveling and currently at the airport. So um, I'll, uh, the meeting is now in order. Um, can we move forward with an approval of the agenda? Um, but before we do that, uh, I need to call. I, I'm asking for a motion to amend the agenda so that we can add uh, Mr. Paul Reed's request for a refund to the new business. And we'll be discussing it first as item A in the new business. Motion to approve agenda as uh, amended. I have a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, so, so, I'm so sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? Okay. And the new agenda is approved with the amended um, item added. Uh, the uh, move on to item three, mayoral library board appointments, uh, Ken Brooks. Um, for this, do we need a vote or can I just appoint? Um, you can, why don't we go ahead and just do a vote for both. both. That's how we've historically done that. So okay. we'll go ahead and have you call for a motion. And then okay. Can we have a, a motion to appoint Ken Brooks to the, to the library board? Okay. Everybody wants to, Ken. <laughs> Motion to uh, appoint Ken Brooks I'll to the like library. Second. Okay. All those in favor, or any discussion? Ken, you need to say anything? No, ma'am. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Any opposed? Okay. Welcome to the library board, Ken. Um, now, uh, do we have a, a motion to appoint Samuel Morrow? To the library board. Motion to appoint Samuel Morrow to the library board. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 3 0. Um, Samuel Morrow will, will also join uh, the library board. Um, so we will move on to the mayoral city council committee appointments. Um, so uh, with the change uh, in um, some circumstances and also uh, with uh, members of council departing, we kind of had to realign these. Um, and just so everybody knows as well, uh, this is not final because obviously we're going to be having another uh, council member do this. So when that council member joins us, um, I will reshuffle and, and again, take all of your preferences and things into account. And I do want to recognize council members for being one person short. This is a lot of extra service. So I appreciate that for everybody. Um, for the ambulance and public safety board, it will be Omar Martinez and Dana Dominguez. Uh, for buildings, grounds, streets, alleys, sidewalks, and cemetery will be Ashley Smith and Omar Martinez. Um, for emergency 911 board, it will be Omar Martinez. For employment policies and grievances, it'll be Dana Dominguez and Ashley Smith. For electric, water, sewer, utility, and solid waste board, will be Ashley Smith and Omar Martinez. For finance and ordinance, Dana Dominguez and Ashley Smith. Mayor Pro Tem will remain Dana Dominguez. Uh, Muscatine Joint Communications Com and Emergency Management Agency will be Omar Martinez. Um, I will continue on the Muscatine County Assessors Board. Um, Eric uh, Whirling will continue on the Muscatine Radio user, user Group. The Parks and Rec Board will be Omar Martinez. We lead will be uh, City Manager Dave Baldwin. And the Library Board will be Dana Dominguez. Um, in addition, we have a special task force for the Fire EMS Committee. Uh, that will be Dana Dominguez and Kara McFerrin. Um, and if your name is mentioned first on these lists, it means you are the chair. Any questions from council? How often do these committees meet, or is it just as needed? As needed. Uh, well, Dave. Yeah, it'll be pretty much be as needed. And I'll get to one of the committees that you're on here this evening uh, a little bit later, but we're going to want to try to schedule the meeting the utility committee here in the next few weeks. Okay. And I'll talk about it a little bit more later in my report. Sure. Thank you. Um, do we have a motion to uh, to approve 
or any further discussion, questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the appointments? One motion to approve the appointments. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Any opposed? Okay, so the appointments will go through. Um, oh, did you raise your hand, Dave? No, I oh, was scratching your hand. No, no I was it. just. Have an answer, sorry. No, 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 you're fine. Um, so we will move on to item five, approval <clears throat> of the consent agenda. Do you have a motion to approve? Motion to approve consent agenda. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Mayor, uh, I did provide uh, the safe Foot report. I emailed your electronic copy and then I provided a printed copy. Um, this uh, concludes we are closed for our fiscal year end. Um, and there is on the front page of the, there is a year end adjusting entry. Um, that amount will be discussed with our auditor. Mm -hmm. um, so once we go through our audit, um, we will update the June 2022 uh, treasurer's report to um, show, you know, what the changes and what that entry um to correct that balance. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? I just want to say thank you. I know that you have a very, very full plate. And so getting these done is also difficult. So I appreciate you and your staff for, for working on these. And thank, thank you, Mayor. Any other discussions, questions, comments? Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So did we already do that? Oh, yeah, that was the discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, passes 3 0. Uh, we will move on to item six vendor voucher claims. Um, do we have a, a motion to approve before we get into the discussion? Motion to approve vendor voucher claims. We have a second. Second. Okay. Discussion. I know, Carrie, you have had a question. Yeah, I, I just have a few questions in regards to line number nine domain listings. I wanted to make sure that the annual website domain wasn't double dipped in billing because sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but I am, it's my understanding that it is not that case. No, nope. in fact. Okay. Here's, I, you can't see, and I'm sorry, um, the historic record here. So that is a legitimate vendor. Um, this is for the Park and Recreation website. So that's mm -hmm. their electronic address uh, on the internet uh, to that website. And we, it, it appears we started that in 2019. It's an annual fee. Um, it started out as $228 and it looks like it's gone up in uh, April of 2022 um, to 288. Okay. So. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't yeah. already instituted with the design of the website mm -hmm. and then builds also mm -hmm. on top of that. But I mean, I guess you have some experience with that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have as well. <laughs> yeah, and then, and just... Uh, uh, line item 31, I just was curious as to what the Mellon and Associates bill was about I mean, for 13000 Those were, those were uh, some actuators that were put in at the water treatment plant um, for the effluent filters for treating the water. I saw those this morning and I verified that with Dan. Those were personal at the plant. Okay. So everything that's listed as OP supplies, does that mean operating supplies for a specific like department or? The, so it is a description that the supervisor would have placed on their um, purchase order. So it may reference to the type of filter, but we can follow up with the, with the supervisor. Um, a lot of times the descriptions that you're gonna see on the uh, listing, has to do to match up with what the superintendent places on their purchase uh, order um, that goes along with the invoicing. Well, I had the same question because mm -hmm. it's on 
City Hall and it's on Public Works and it's on Wastewater. It says OP. Yep. And so that, I, yep. I just didn't know if that was the standard. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, just because yeah. there's like there's some for Fred's and there's some for Amazon and I, so I was just wondering more like is there somewhere I can look to see what it was or yeah and we will talk we can just okay that cool. in yeah. order to have her put a little bit more description in there yeah. for you guys thank you yeah because like one of them says cemetery so like okay okay that makes sense but some of them don't say anything so I was just mm -hmm. curious so on the purchase orders they actually code it with a, a line item number yeah and so and I, and I apologize I didn't didn't know if you would understand that title of it. So when the superintendent, the title on there would be operating supplies would be the memo. Yes, so it's similar at school. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I was wondering. It must mean, you know, how you classify. Yep. And for the expense, as Sherry said, um, so Brittany, um, she was promoted into the account uh, payables and so she's this is I think her fifth claims yep. so By working yep yeah, so working through that with her and just helping her better understand you know she may have to go a little bit more and put some more description into those versus what the superintendents place on those purchase orders or invoices so I have one more number 80 says Casey's field fuel cards mm -hmm. what is that for so those would be the casey's um fuel credit cards so for the entire all the departments oh okay. uh, yeah, they, yeah. yep have a fuel card okay. assigned to their vehicles thank you sorry thank you i no. think they don't you divide it up between uh both gas providing uh, entities in town as far as correct we have giving a, business correct we have um so we have an account with bp uh -huh. uh, so they can uh, provide service to Geary's BP and also Casey's. Um, both provide diesel and um, and fuel. So again, I think it, for the most part, our our departments try to you know um, equitably divide up the businesses, but we do get bulk uh, from uh, sure. from Geary uh, mm -hmm. for down at our shop. So, and you'll occasionally see a billing on there for Gary. Um, yeah. For diesel. For that fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have two quick questions. Just curious 87, 88, there's two billing reimbursements. I was wondering what that was for. Um. It's, oh, sorry, I can speak on that. So those are actual um, ambulance billing reimbursements. So the insurance company and the patient both paid and then PCC sends us billing that we have to reimburse. Mm -hmm. These are two people that we had to reimburse those for. So there was Great. duplicate payments on those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And since it was a public record due to their medical, I did not, we did not notice that it was an ambulance. Those are two questions. Any other questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, the voucher claims are accepted. Three zero. Move on to public public comments and or correspondence. Um, I will say again, this is the time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business other than those listed on the agenda. And remind you that no action may be taken. So please state your name and address for the record and keep your comments to no more than two minutes. Does anybody want to speak? Okay. We'll move on to um, from public comments to city council public comments and or correspondences. Council members. The only thing I've received is a uh, call from a community member who is interested in putting their name in as an appointee to fill the vacancy position. And that individual um, said they would be sending a letter and coming down to put their name in officially. Okay. <clears throat> no, I was just wondering, do we have any applications yet for that? We have not received okay. any applications yet. Thank you. And just as a reminder, those are due by noon on 
8 mm -hmm. so they're due by noon on Thursday. Mm -hmm. If we do not have an application, what, what happens? Do we know? We can talk about it later. I'm just going to just show well, we still have 60 days to get some appointment. They could, I mean, we could, if if there are none that come in because it, we're, we're, we're hitting this one early, we could publish again, but we just have to have that done within that 60 day time period, or yeah. it does go to a special okay. Great. Um, So for the, for the public comments or correspondence, I also have something, and I, I think it's just a general sort of thing that um, addressing sort of the, the high cost of utilities right now for everybody. I know that that is huge. Um, it's huge for me too. Um, so I, I encourage people to keep trying to contact. Um, <clears throat> I have been in contact with a member of our community who uh, feels they were overcharged uh, for the, they, they um, but the, the steps were taken to make sure that it wasn't a meter problem or an R problem. So uh, we're working on finishing the resolution for that. Um, but I don't know if there's anything that city administration can add about just the high cost. Like, do we have, I mean, everything is expensive. This isn't shocking right now, but is there something that, some sort of insight or anything that you can provide for the reason everything is going up? Um, I'll, I'll have Sherry join me on this conversation. Um, again, I would just if anyone's in tune to the current affairs of the news, you can see that, you know, across the board, we have uh, extremely hot weather that has gone on continuously for a number of months. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that that's also impacting of the use. Um, likewise, the cost for um, generating electricity, mm -hmm. um, when your fuel prices, um, your, your coal, um, the items used to produce, um, and we those produce at a at a higher rate versus your wind and your solar. So wind and solar, um, is, I, based on a program of how that works, you're gonna you have more fuel and coal producing electricity at a much faster demand than you have at your wind and your solar. But wind and solar is also utilized um, for that. Uh, for that it cost, so they take that into effect as well. Mm -hmm. And so with those individuals consuming more based on heat or um, again, utilizing air conditioning, window air conditioning based on your windows, your your home being insulated, mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors that go into your consumption being more. Maybe your consumption didn't change, but the same is the factor to the cost uh, to purchase the electricity is is higher because um, of the demand on that. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, from the city. So, just an example. Um, I think we mentioned this at the last meeting. Are typically the monthly bill for the city to purchase uh, power. It, it was running around an average of two hundred and thirty thousand. And so in the last two months, it's averaged about 480,000. So again, um, that cost then is um, distributed uh, amongst all of the, the community members. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and industry and commercial all as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we did, um, we, we did our best to try to put um, more information out there as soon as we possibly could. Um, I do, I, I think we're going to see at least one more month where we're, we're going to see, um, the bill being a little, maybe not as high as it was this month. Um, but I don't see it dropping down probably until maybe November, December. And, and then I would say you would see on your utility billing, um, that power factor, you're going to see that go down because the cost or with the usage going down and there has been um, the cost for fuel, as you see, is coming down a little bit more. Again, with all of those in place, hopefully we'll start to see that. Um, the other thing is, is I know I had a staff member just finish up on creating a two tutorials. 
talking about the billing and talking about the power charge. Mm -hmm. And so we're ed we're doing some editing on that and then we will work to get it um, created and for uh, bilingual. And we're also trying to look and see if there's any other way we can uh, do something. So if it's not Spanish, that if there's another language that they can use to help uh, translate that. Um, to be more informative across the board to all of our utility customers. Mm -hmm. um, as the mayor stated, please reach out to the city. I know over the last two months and we did offer an additional extension again with this higher bill. Um, and I know we have customers that are reaching out and they are um, utilizing those extensions. They are writing the contracts. And so, and we're working with um, everyone is um, the best we can, but it's most important for the utility customer to make sure that they reach out to the city to establish that um, before they have a disconnection or they are disconnected. If they do become disconnected, um, it's not that we still can't continue to work with the customer, but it's going to be into their favor because there's additional charges they're going to come up if you are disconnected. So anything more, Sherry, that I need? Um, the only other thing is, is our kilowatt usage typically runs like 1.9 million for the most part. The last two months, it's been over 2.5 million. Um, this month, it was almost 2.9 million. So the usage, of, as I stated at the last meeting, the usage across the board is really high mm -hmm. and you're billed for your usage. So that fuel factor is going on your usage. Mm -hmm. It's not an additional charge. So it's, it's like more usage combined with more expensive correct. fuel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And our, is such a the fuel factor last month was like 0 0.03 something, and this month it's 0.04. Mm -hmm. So that goes on top of that portion. And when you say that, Sherry, mm -hmm. is that, Lee, what you were talking about with what we pay for Correct. that uh, that energy, yeah. that electricity, and how that's distributed? That's that the fuel the rate fuel, that goes up? Yep, yeah, that okay. fuel, you, you might hear it interchangeably used as fuel factor or power charge. They're okay. the same exact thing. Um, it has your electricity and then all of your fuels and stuff are on there as well. So the higher that that is, the higher that power charge is going to be. Okay. And as a city, we don't have any control over setting that. That's just passed down to us from where we get our utilities from. Correct. Okay. It's, yep, it's a, it was generated by our engineers and it's to avoid having huge cost increases each year on your electric. So it fluctuates throughout the year instead of having like between five and 10% increase on your electric each year, it's divvied out amongst the um, like breakdown throughout the year. So instead of saying, hey, we're going to increase you 10% mm -hmm. this year, you're charged the 0 0.04, whatever it may be across the board for everyone. So we as a city do set that? Then. No. No. Okay. No, it's they set said by our engineers. Okay. Right? The, I thought that meant like our city engineers kind of. No. Okay. So the, 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 yeah, the calculation. Okay. The cal yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And then it's the cost of our electric okay. that's set. So I'm like, Right now, some folks don't realize. So every utility company that sells electricity has some calculation within that billing to factor this in. As a municipality, we um, are required to separate out that factor from the actual usage calculation sure. consumption. Um, but larger corporations, um, Again, just as Sherry said, they, they may have another power charge, power factor, or they could be based on their rates. So some corporations have what they call a winter rate, some have a summer rate. Yeah. And so those are typically, again, they're adjusting that calendar year based on usage, consumption, and the cost to produce electricity. So it's just, again, with the municipality, we are not as large as a corporation and we do not have um, a utility base to di divide out. We're only basing it off of how many customers we have in our utility uh, customer versus larger corporations or even a larger city. If a larger yeah. city has that, they have more people to divide those costs out to. Yeah, if that makes so kind of at the mercy of 
how much we got to pay for the grid because mm -hmm. that's where our power source primarily comes from. Mm -hmm. And then if we generate the which we can sell back mm -hmm. to the grid, but we're also paying for the fuel yep. mm -hmm. for the diesel to mm -hmm. run those solar turbines that we're able to operate and generate. But in any case, it's happening all over the country. I was in Illinois for the last four days. And even in Illinois, people were complaining left and right in the stores, in my family, <laughs> how expensive the power was. So it's not just a West Liberty problem. It's a cross the board problem. Because as I understand it, not that this has a lot of relevance. As I understand it, there's primarily three grids in our nation. And we are in the middle. There's an Eastern grid and a, and Texas. Well, <laughs> Texas has their own grid and there's an Eastern grid and then the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So we're working in conjunction with our, if you call it region, and so, you know, it just depends on how much consumption there is for that area. And we've had a lot of consumption, period. And plus, you have to keep in mind, too, that uh, I enjoy being able to have air conditioning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie nope. <laughs> in this weather, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it adds up. It just adds mm -hmm. up. And even if you have a, two fans in every room, again, it adds up in this heat that we're having, this record setting heat, fans, air conditioning, refrigerators, freezers that mm -hmm. people have, those all have to work harder. And my my AC was going on and off like like you know a metronome because of the heat that's that was happening this summer. So I mean those are things you have to consider in your own home is what is it that is running, right? And it whatever it is, perhaps it's running a little harder because of the heat. Mm -hmm. I think that's important to note. Bob, I'm going to throw this out there too. Uh, I want to be careful just in my own life to sort of frame it. Yes, there is a there is a responsibility by the consumer to reduce consumption. I think that that's very important across the country, but also worth looking into some of the compensation and salaries that some executives at some of these power companies get, and it's friggin' unfair. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, if we, you know, if we had options, that would be lovely. So folks, you know, check those things out when you're voting. We, you're we, voting do, for. we do have an option in our contract. So our contract, um, we actually have what we set several years ago. So we have, um, and again, um, we can provide that information. But when we contracted, we, we contracted, I think at five cents, um, almost five cents a kilowatt. And so the city um, negotiate a really great contract. Mm -hmm. And right now it's very fortunate that we're still in that contract mm -hmm. because had we have to negotiate a contract right now, um, we would probably see triple that in, in a contract. So, oh yeah, no, this so, is taking it completely yeah. just, my so, comment was like out of the city and yeah. like, pay attention to elections folks. And yeah. people, you're, so so for the that. most part, yeah, we are we do have control mm -hmm through the contract mm -hmm. on that for our, for yeah. our utility customers. Okay. Any other public comments or anything? And we do have council member Martinez is on Zoom, so. Welcome, Omar. So I will make sure to pay attention for his vote when we move forward. Um, City Manager Clerk, public comments or post finances? Or Thank you. Uh, oh, yep, yeah. no. All right. <laughs> Okay. So we'll move on to um, item eight, old business. Uh, Latinos Unidos of West Liberty request to attend event hours for the Fiesta Latina uh, 2022 event to 10 p.m. Yes, Francisco's here this evening. He uh, he contacted me several weeks ago and, and we met. Um, earlier this year, it would have been, I believe it was the first meeting in April uh, when he submitted his original proposal, it was to go till 9.30. And he would like to extend 
the music until 10 p.m. He actually, they have two bands that are traveling here from Mexico this year, and they've got the other band, I think he said was from Des Moines. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So he was hoping to um, allow the music to go an, an extra half hour, and I said that the staff, we didn't have the authority to do that. Council had previously set that at 930, and he did submit a request, which you should have in your packet. Mm -hmm. From staff's perspective, you know, we're Oh, okay with that. We just needed to bring it to you folks to confirm that. Mm -hmm. Now, our Francisco has anything else that he'd like to say? My daughter, she is beautiful. Why is better than why she come with me? Um, yeah, so we will be having um, two international bands coming from Mexico. Um, and they did request one that's coming um, directly from Durango, Mexico. Um, if they could uh, play for another half hour, just because they're recording for so long, for, mm -hmm. from so far away. Um, and so we would like to have an extra hour, uh, extra half an hour, sorry. Um, and my dad did mention that by 11, we will have the street cleared out, cleaned, everything picked up, uh, you know, not, no going over 11. And just, just as a reminder for the whole festival, for the Children's Festival, as well as the Latino Festival, but we had some concerns earlier this year when that came before council. And we said that we would have staff uh, will be um, on the streets Sunday morning, picking up trash and sweeping. So we don't have the repeat of what we had last year with the complaints. So. And we did provide um, a copy of the flyer in, yep. in your, so just in case. Um, do we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? I just also in that was just Omar. Oh, that was up Omar. <laughs> um, I, in addition, I I saw that Stephanie um, needed volunteers for the children's festival. So if anyone um, has some spare time on Saturday to volunteer, just contact um, Stephanie or Monica from the puppetry place. And just something to this well, um, Chief Orling um, has partnered with the Rotary Club and they're going to be fingerprinting um, youth uh, as part of the uh, Rotary is doing their, their human trafficking tent and then parents going to come and do the fingerprints that parents can have on the file and fix what happened. Mm -hmm. so all those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, so four that passes four zero. We'll keep it open till ten. Shoot for eleven next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll move on to item B, West Liberty Children's Festival request to amend approved sure. event on September tenth, twenty twenty two. Excuse me, to include use of city right away for signage placement. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, what's the discussion? Madam Mayor and Council, so um a step so it um we do not provide um right away usage with signage, and this is why um this is why Stephanie is requesting to utilize because you can request to utilize right away for the signage, and that's um as you can see in her her email she had provided it was just to make sure that they can put some directional uh, signage up for the event. Um, it's a very well attended event. And um, she's also stated that they will make sure that they remove the signage from the right away as soon as the event is completed. So. And it sounds like it's on the street poles rather than the utility light poles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, it won't be on, and, and it won't be on a step, so. Right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, four zero. That passes. Move on to ordinance or to uh, item C, ordinance 02202T0816, amending the stormwater utility ordinance 2021, Title 7, Chapter 12, Stormwater Utility. One to twelve billing in collection, second reading, with the consideration to rate to waive third and final reading. A motion for amending the stormwater utility ordinance, and with the consideration to waive third reading. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Is the penalty of five percent the same as all the other utilities? 
So we'll vote on this one if we're ready. Uh, Omar? Yes. 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 That passes 4 0 um, with the, and we will, uh, including waiving the third reading. Uh, item D. Uh, 03 ordinance amending the golf ATV UTV ordinance 2021 by removing ATV UTV from the final, or I'm sorry, from the chapter <clears throat> to golf carts only. Second reading with the consideration to waive third and final reading. Motion to approve ATV UTV from the chapter of golf carts only with the um, Consideration to waive the third reading, second third and final reading. Any discussion needed there? Okay. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote for this. Councilmember Martinez. Yes. 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 That passes four zero as well. We'll move on to item E, new business. Um, A. Item A, event request for the Comet Classic Marching Band Competition. On Madam October. Mayor. Oh, we amended and you have Mr. Reed's request. Um, oh, that's right. Yep, I said that right. I would do that first, didn't I? My apologies. No, no problem. So um, uh, I would like council to review the memo. I know it, it came very late um, uh, it, about the, the refund uh, to, to Mr. Reed. Um, in the amount of seventy-two dollars and ten cents, um, for a FOIA request that that he is saying um, was not completed. So um, I don't know. Uh, do we? Is this a vote thing? Can we vote? Or we can discuss. Sort of. Yeah, we'd have to have a motion in the second, and then you can have discussion. Good discussion. Mm -hmm. So do we have a um and um at this point we'll. I would ask Councilmember Dominguez not to not to um, vote for this one or move forward because of the potential conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. um, but do we have a, a motion to review and to talk about this motion? Do we have a second? Omar, are you going to second or no? I'll second that. We can move into discussion. Um, I don't. I don't really know sort of where we should start with this, but essentially, um, council, if you have any questions or anything for Lee, I definitely do not want to put anybody in the hot seat tonight. Um, but sort of as I understand it, um, there there is a dispute between uh, services um, rendered and and services paid for. Um, from from Mr. Reed and from the city, uh, there was a. Can I talk about the, there was a there was a complaint filed um, by Mr. Reed to the to the board um, for public records, and it came back uh, that the city um, had done everything that they needed to do, and that the complaint um, was dismissed. Um, but Mr. Reed is is seeking a, a refund um, regardless. Um, Saying that uh, he um, uh, that he did not get the records that he had asked for that they were repeat to ones that he'd already paid or that he already had uh, been uh, submitted a FOIA request for. So um, I don't know if, if council has any questions, comments, or not. I think he was uh, given ample, I mean, opportunities when he had requested in the past without any billing i believe mm -hmm. and he's been um very much i think afforded the requests that he's asked so i i think it was within the realm of um fair and adequate to charge especially since the um he did go before the um what was it? The records, Iowa Records Information Board, to look into whether or not this was fair, and they they basically said that uh, 
uh, he'd been served records that were accessible and charged within the recommendation by the board. So as far as I see it, I, I think that um, we should let it stand as is. Is it typical um, when somebody submits a FOIA request and then they go to pick up their information, do they get to look and see what is in the envelope before they pay for it? Because that seems like what his biggest complaint is, is that he didn't get to check it out before he paid. So what's normal? So they have to pay for the work that's been completed. And um, there were items that were delivered electronically um, prior. The only other items that came up in the request next were, were printed and placed in a folder for mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Reed to pick up. And any of the other items requested, we simply did not have a record of that. So it, it is part of it that you charge before the customer receives or leaves the records. Then at that time, if it's decided that um, that the that the time or there was an additional need, then you can review the charge and and refund the charge. Um, however, though, I had communicated um, that there had been um, more than the hours and that we were fairly charging mm -hmm. for the uh, the correspondence, the investigation, uh, the production of the records and and discussion with legal counsel over certain records. And so, um, so that was again where the Iowa Public Board said that um, the charge prior and stands as a as a fair fee. Plus, if you ask for information, however that information is, it it still takes the staff person time to gather whether it's to print it, look it up. Uh, send it whatever the case is it takes staff time so i i don't as long if you're getting information no matter what it is it still takes time for them to process that so does that time come from the regular 9 a.m to 5 p.m staff work day or is that like somebody stayed late to get all of this stuff figured out do you know which which way it goes i say Typically, you should be able to provide that research during, you know, your daily operation hours. Okay. However, um, because we have limited staff, and uh, as a clerk, I'm the only one who can typically research it. So it's done after, typically it's done after hours to have the time to, to focus on it. But there was also some things that had to have um, discussion with legal counsel for if there was anything in there that needed to be redacted or if they had records that um, that were being requested that existed that I didn't have knowledge or access to. So there was that discussion that had that they had with our legal counsel. Um, then there's also the discussion to going to each member or talking to council members to see if they have a record that's also being requested. Um, because as a clerk, you have to, again, that's part of the process and you have to ask in order to retrieve records um, to provide that for that request. So there's time invested in doing those, that communication, um, along with retrieving the record, producing the record. Um, so the $72.10 that the city collects for this, where does that go? Like, what does that get? Does, does it just go into general fund? Does that go onto your paycheck? Like, where does it go after we collect it? It, it, it goes into the um, city services uh, as a fee. Okay. And it's under the general fund as a as a records um, fee. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I don't get paid extra to do it. I mean, I didn't really think so, but yeah. I, no, like, I thought I should ask, where does <laughs> nope, it go? That's okay. a fair question. And no, it's not an additional... Well, that's part of the duties of my of my job. Okay. Um, the two dollars and ten cents is uh, due to utilizing a either a credit or a debit card, so it was a seventy dollar fee. Mm -hmm. Omar, do you have any comments? Zoom land? No, I do not. Um. And then uh, would this be a consent vote or a roll call vote? It would be a consent. Okay. And I just added my recommendations um, was not to refund. Um, by refunding, then what would be the sense of having a policy that we're charging? Because we have a policy that states that we charge um, in order to process, collect, 
and provide records or even just the work to um, investigate, retrieve, and produce. So um, that was just my recommendation uh, as the information had been provided to Mr. Reed. And he received it via either electronically. Um, Mr. Reed chose not to take the copies um, and did not sign um, that he received the records. Okay. Yeah. So he took two of them. And there's no charge for the first um, the initial on that. He had an initial on the one he did. When, when was the first, I guess, request that he made that he's referring to? Because he said June 9th was the first request. Okay. And um, in that request, I provided um, most of all of the, everything was provided to Mr. Reed via electronic. Uh -huh. um, anything that I had access to, I provided um, electronically and did not charge uh, because I had access to, to it electronically and was sure. able to provide it in a, in a timely manner. In all honesty, it probably, you know, did take me the time to collect it and retrieve it, but it didn't. And so uh, council brought the, the mayor and the council brought the uh, public records policy back to the table to be reviewed. Yeah. Um, so going forward that we make sure that we're implementing that rate. And so, and that is what I did with this second request. Um, and I did communicate to Mr. Reed through our email communications that he had been requesting duplicates. Okay, that's what I wondered. And that I still didn't time. have um, a record to produce. Um, I did not have access to a record um, that there was duplication within mm -hmm. that. Okay. Any other questions? Comments. Thank you for answering the question. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do a, a consent vote. Um, I guess we will do all in favor of issuing the refund. I repeat, I repeat Benny and uh, all those opposed? Aye. I didn't hear Omar. I didn't hear Omar. No. Uh, so uh, for not issuing a refund, is that correct, Omar? Yes. yes. So um, zero to three uh, recusal. Um, uh, we will not be issuing the refund to Mr. Reed at this time. So now we will move to uh, event request for the Comet Classic Marching Band Competition on October 8, 2022. From 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. with Elm Street closure request. We have a motion. Motion. Second. And then I don't know, Ashley, do, does Ashley need to recuse herself from this? No, there's too? no personal gain. Okay. okay. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, but just no, 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 no. Okay. That's awesome. Um, but you certainly can ask Ms. Smith if she'd like to provide some information and about the events and any questions you have. Okay. Do we have to do a vote to discuss it? Do we do that? We can do a, if, if we've got a, a motion. motion. Okay. okay. we got a motion in yeah. a second. Okay. okay. No. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I've never, I've never filled out one of these requests before. So if I'm missing information, please let me know and I can, I can do it again. Um, traditionally we hold an annual show bar competition every January, every February. Um, and in the last few years with having COVID and having to be indoors, um, it's, it's just, it, it's not as big as it used to be. So we had the idea to try something new this year and we thought we'd try an outdoor marching band competition. Um, the good news is that next year when we host it, it sounds like we'll have a wonderful new athletic facility to host it in. Um, but this year we're having to be a little bit creative with where we're going to put buses and trailers and hundreds of marching band children. Um, mm -hmm. Originally, you know, I would have thought that they would be practicing on our practice field, but by that point in October, it's going to be torn up to be like installing groundwork and everything. So um, I had talked to Nick Heath and he said it would be okay if we put the marching bands to warm up at Dutton and then, you know, drive down Max in and then basically they drop off the kids at the high school and the kids would walk over, but then every band brings an equipment trailer with them and, and smaller bands are maybe a 20 foot trailer, but bigger bands are sometimes pulled by a semi. And so we'd like to be able to park them on that little like strip on Elm Street so that the kids don't have to wheel like giant instruments, you know, down the streets of West Liberty. Um, we would have barricades at each end and I would have adult volunteers 
stacked with those barricades so that like if there was someone that lives in the apartments that needed to come or go, they could like move it and and whatever. Um, and I think it would be helpful to have no parking signs along Maxon uh, for that day, kind of like when they do the parade, just so that there's not buses trying to go past each other. Um, but other than that, is there any other information I can provide? Yes. Um, when is the date of the event? It is Saturday, October 8th. Oh. Oh, I wrote date of event 9 a.m. Good job, Ashley. Um, I had it. It's I pulled it. Agenda. I pulled it. I have it on your agenda. Okay, so thank you. Sorry. Saturday, October 8th. Okay. Yeah, it is in the morning. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, four zero. We'll be having that that event here in West Liberty. And I, I didn't realize that we had to ask permission to put signs out. So I guess I'll have that for the next we'll, one. We'll just go ahead and I took okay. some notes um, as to what you and and it's okay. It was, I drew a map of where to put all the signs. Did, I you sent it very, to me. Okay, I made a lot of maps. For there's this. always, <laughs> um, you know, it's a first event, and so there there's definitely going to be some correspondence going back and forth. Sure. And so if there's anything, you know, major changes, then we would bring it back to council. Okay. But again, I think it's something between our city staff and and um and yourself, the school, we can we yeah. can work through those. And things. we have a really supportive fine arts booster club. Like Absolutely. the parents are all on board, so they yep. can do whatever we need to do. No, nope. nope. I think it's maybe we could get the PD to, I don't know, help out, or I don't, I don't know put the signs, the no parking signs. Well, we have a ton of no parking signs. Okay. So we'll I would love to meet with you and figure out what you're thinking, and then you. we should take notes on how it works, so that way it's going to be an annual thing. We keep making it better for the next year. That sounds great. Thank you. As a former marching band mom, I can't wait. It's going to be loud. <laughs> oh, and, be and it'll be over with by like 4 p.m., so then yeah. you know, everybody gets to go and take a nap. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to um, City Council discussion and appropriate action for economic development grant application. With consideration <clears throat> of approval of $25,000 matching grant funds for the Brook Ventures LLC 317 North Spencer Building Project. We'll go into a little bit of uh, some additional information. As you recall, um, Ken had applied for a $200,000 grant through the state uh, for Brook Ventures for the redevelopment of the property at 317 North Spencer. The city did approve that um, agreement, the previous council meeting. Since that point, um, our next item will pick up. There's a development agreement between the city and the Brook Brothers. But as part of that, they needed some sort of a match for the state. So Ken worked with them to put together the economic development grant that we have available through the city through our uh, money that comes through TIF. Uh, we've only awarded one grant this year, so there's still seventy-five thousand dollars, and their the work that they're applying for uh, is in the neighborhood of seventy thousand dollars. So the twenty-five is just kind of a match to theirs, which really is going to be the exterior portion of tuck pointing and, and smoke on the outside, and then the state grant will be utilized to do a lot of that interior work and so forth. And, and Kenzer, he he may want to add a couple other. I don't think if there's anything you want to add to it. The building is not in safe condition, so the tuck point is going to be critical. They have to do that first before they can get in. And we needed, if you're going to approve this, we needed to do it before you took action on the next one. That's why you got this from before you took action. Okay. Is this an annual grant that we have every year that we there's, can apply for? There's $100,000 that is utilized. Uh, the council committed to, I believe, five years, and we're in year three. Cool. So uh, they take $100,000 from the TIF funds, and it's it's been utilized for, um, like, Casey Bell's property out at Dutton. Uh, Jim Fields used it for a few times. The New Strand Theaters used it. West L. Um, oh. They were approved. Oh. Paul, Paul Revere's mm -hmm. work downtown. And all of those are all things that have been funded. So cool. that's was like Bird's building. So. Yeah. So. Seven and the max, yeah, 115, 115. The max amount is 25,000 that each of the owners can receive one time per, per, per building per, per property. Because, like with Jim Keel, he actually we just approved, I think, his third for that building. But if he 
it took them up to that twenty-five thousand dollars yeah. price. It's it's per address. Correct? Per address. That's correct. Okay. That's yeah. And that then that's it. Do we have a, a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Can we second? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's four zero. Um, the the approval of the twenty five thousand matching grant funds. So that will move us to item C, resolution two zero two two zero nine zero six six dash one four, a resolution to approve development agreement between City of West Liberty and Brook Ventures LLC. And this um, is just another requirement as part of receiving that two hundred thousand dollar grant was we're required to have a development agreement with the developer and. If you approve that, then we'll submit that to the state to go along with that thought. Okay. We have a motion. Motion. And a second. Second. Any more discussion needed? Okay. We'll do a roll call vote starting with Omar. Yes. 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 Okay. That passes four zero. Move on to um, item D, resolution 2022096-15, a resolution to approve extending the 28E agreement, um, City of West Liberty and West Liberty Rural Ambulance, effective July 1, 2022, until December 31st, 2022. Motion? Second. Any discussion? This is just an extension of... We already have. That's true. Is it typical that we only extend it six months at a time, or does it normally go for a couple of years? Or like, how come normally it goes longer? Normally it would go longer, but in this instance, we're working through yeah. uh, our task force, okay. and they're looking at the potential of creating an agency which will bring in the ambulances as well. Um, but we're getting ready to go into audit, so we need to make sure we've got a current agreement. Got with it. the Amos board, and that was discussed in our last task force meeting. That's why it's It's kind of an exception. This, right, this, this a short term thing. Yeah, well, we, we had done a six month previous, <clears throat> and so that's what I'm kind of sticking with. And if, and I guess you'll get a presentation at your next meeting um, mm -hmm. from the task force, and it may have to be extended again potentially for a few months. Okay. There we go. Okay. Omar. Yes. Dana? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That passes, that resolution passes 4 0. So we will extend that 28E um, through December 31st, 2022. And we will move on to item E, resolution 2022096-16, a resolution to approve leave paramedic job description. Do we have a motion? Motion. Um, can we have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Are there any changes from the previous lead paramedic job description, or is this a brand new description that's never existed before? This is a brand, this is a new um, mm -hmm. in September of 2021. Um, there were some uh, jobs placed before council or some titles for positions. And um, the the lead paramedic job description had not been provided, um, had been provided by the department, um, but council had not um, had an updated version to approve. And so now if there is a recommendation for an individual to be promoted to lead paramedic position. And so with that, then we come in with the job description to be um, provided and, and, and included in the ambulance department's um, job description. Okay, so the position isn't new, but this description of it is. The position is the position. new. Oh, okay. and the job yeah. description. Okay, I'm sorry, I was confused. Yep. Okay, got it. Just quick giving some history that back in September, the yes. department did recommend that position be added. Got it. Um, and do most other cities our size have a lead paramedic and other paramedics? Like, is that a this, normal? Not to my knowledge. I, I don't have knowledge. I'll okay. just say yeah. that. So right. this this is um, important because we have been the ambulance squad such a limited staff that if our EMS coordinator, who is the supervisor over everybody, is not there on vacation, not 
you know, then there could be someone else. The lead paramedic can have supervisory, um, if, if I'm understanding that right. Okay. Um, which I, I think they they kind of ran under this model, but it was never like formal, formal, formalized. Yeah, for that position. Um, so I think from skimming through emails, that's what this is supposed to do is formalize that. Great, thank you. And then I noticed the classification is non-exempt. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So non-exempt, if you could refresh, is that salary or non -salary? The, wage? It, it's hourly. They would be able to work. Hourly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to, and the current position is a part-time position. So based on the wage and hour testing, um, it doesn't meet the requirements for it to have to be a salary position because the wages, the salary earned is not um, based on the compensation testing at this time. Okay. <clears throat> you ready to vote? Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, I'll start with Kara this time. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Omar. Yes. That passes four zero. Um, description. Um, so we will move on to item F, which is resolution two zero two two zero nine zero six dash one seven, a resolution to approve city ambulance department salary and job titles for fiscal year twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three. Um, I will mention here um, that. Uh, we are, I, I believe city, we are missing some, some information uh, for this. We are missing job titles. Is that, that is correct? Um, we're currently missing. Um, so we have requested um, correspondence from the ambulance board with regards to uh, naming the interim uh, promotion and what the um, hourly rates for what the wage would be. Um, there were minutes received, but it did not name specific names, and it did give the wages, um, the wage range. Uh, again, we just, we had been in communication and we had not received. Um, so Dave, when I emailed you and you responded back, I had thought that, that you had found that. Just the minutes, all the minutes reflected from July 17th was that they were looking to um, get the job description for the coordinator update so they could advertise for a coordinator. Yeah, but then through email, remember the board had discussed um, putting Tammy in as interim and you had agreed Kurt, to that. Kurt, Kurt had said that, I, I asked Kurt if the intent was to name Tammy in the mm -hmm. interim and he said, yes, the board had talked about it, but we hadn't really received anything. Well, we all voted via email electronically, each board well, member. And I think we had asked, I don't know, Lee, you talked with we yeah, have e we have email communications between um, with uh, Eric and Tammy, and I think Kurt was copied in on that. And what I explained to them was is that um, because the EMS coordinator on the ambulance board um, has the the authority over their wages and their position. So what I needed was a a, a statement saying that um, that the individual was going to be promoted to the interim effective and then what the wage um because i don't and we thought they were going to get that to us for today and we didn't get it so i think what we're looking for is to potentially you could approve this subject to receiving that information so we don't have to bring it back because if the city so our so supervisors and the city manager whenever there is a change in wage um, a promotion, um, we have to provide a, a, a change request. We have to follow, that's part of our policy. And so that's where that has to come from the ambulance board because that's basically their change request for that individual position. Um, I just, to make for the record, I, I, I have no doubt that that's their the intent. It's just, we have to have the documentation to support um, so when we're audited on those things, mm -hmm. and again, just trying to make sure we're building a better um, documents and communication between the board and the city, um, yeah. so we're not doing something out of our authorized power. Right. And it would have been really helpful like weeks ago to 
had that clarified because we made it clear in those emails that Sandy was retiring on August 31st and that the board wanted to approve Tammy as interim so Sandy could train her until mm -hmm. her retirement. Council member um, Dominguez, mm -hmm. we have been in communication for the whole month of August back and forth with, um, with those individuals mm -hmm. requesting that. So you were not provided that because I'm going to those were through the employees that we were having that conversation with. So mm -hmm. I do have a record of the emails with Tammy and Eric. We last um, spoke with them again last week mm -hmm. and, were, and, and were promised that we would have something. And I communicated that I have to have that before we come into the meeting tonight to attach to the documentation. And, and Lee, I apologize yeah. if you had said that weeks ago when we had discuss this via email, but that's what I was talking about. Like this could have been done. And I'm not, and I know that you weren't added to some of the, the emails and stuff like that. So I'm not putting that on you at all. I'm just saying it's a little frustrating because I know Sandy isn't there anymore and somebody has to be you know, look over we, this. We, so. we anticipated that Tammy would be named. We just, right. there wasn't anything provided directly from the ambulance board saying that they, that's what they had done. What I asked Curtis, is that the intent? He said, yes, the board had discussed doing that. But there was, uh, other than that, there was nothing other than they had discussed it. So if we're missing a document, would it be reasonable to table this resolution until the next meeting? Is there any drawback to tabling it for the next meeting? So I would, I, I support that we proceed with the document. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not going to make changes to the wage until I have the documentation. Okay. I have, as I stated for the record, I have no argument that that uh, Tammy Wiggum is to be the interim EMS coordinator. I have no, I I, I understand through my correspondence with uh, Tammy and others that um, the lead paramedic would be Brett, and they have hired a new person, and and we have to have a wage, and I just cannot implement. Uh, Tammy's wage until I actually have, and and I'm sure they're working on it, and um, they'll get that to us. So my recommendation is that you go ahead and proceed, mm -hmm. and and then trust them that we're not going to do anything until we actually have the documentation on file. So who um, can be responsible for communicating that? Would that be city admin? Would it be you, Dave, just to get whatever we need yeah, so we, we can move forward based on how the vote goes tonight? Is yeah. that correct? So um, as expeditiously as possible. And so do, does ambulance already have that form, a copy of that form they need to fill out to get this? For the change request, mm -hmm. we don't, I, I don't have to provide, the EMS coordinator is from the board. Mm -hmm. And so whatever they provide me for their official correspondence, then we attach to our internal um, and then the city manager will sign off on it because we received that correspondence in order to update uh, the payroll. Okay. So it, there's no supervisory role or there's no management role by the board. Mm -hmm. So they're not the ones who are going to sign off on that, that change request. That's mm -hmm. an internal policy. So there's no form we needed to fill out because I, I remember Austin, Mark, Eric, um, I, I remember everybody voting electronically on that, but you, you're saying there was a range of salary and there wasn't a specific one, right? I, I, I didn't see any of those emails. Okay. And they didn't disagree that we didn't have. No. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll look through my emails. Maybe I'm confused. At, I mean, like I said, I had reached out to Kurt early on when mm -hmm. we were going through the process of updating the job description. And I said, you know, because Lee and I had talked, we felt like Tammy probably was the logical person to yeah. step in. And I sent Kurt emails the intent of the board mm -hmm. to appoint Tammy. Yeah, I remember he the said, emails. Yes, it was yeah. discussed at the meeting, but there wasn't anything about who voted in favor, you know, what they were going to pay, any, any of that. And then if there was some stuff done through emails with them, we have not received copies of those. And okay. I'll look, I'll look and see what, what went on because I think this is just miscommunication. And I, I and I think this I mean this would go retroactive to the first. It would be effective date of passage As or date the, they, you know, or they the, would communicate that in, you know, correspondence and uh, just say the effective date and what the wages and, and what the position. And I did review um, 
as an interim, again, because interims are temporary. Mm -hmm. um, so based on being an interim, um, we, for compliance purposes, can pay an hourly rate with the overtime if the position was to move to a permanent position. Um, so based on that rate, then that would meet the testing and that would have to be a salary um, at the time of the full time. So whether it's with Tammy or whomever is hired to fill that position, that then would be an exempt position. Yeah. And, and we did have, again, we have that conversation Thank with you. the group, so. Good question. Uh, when we had our previous EMS coordinator that was full time, that was Joan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was it Joan an exempt employee? Correct. So I'm wondering is the lead or is the EMS coordinator, if there's salaried position, why isn't this a salaried position? As an interim, um, yeah. because it's a temporary position, and okay. um, I did clarify that with the wage and hour. I contacted okay. and spoke with them, and it was our communication said, <clears throat> as long as if the individual is already an hourly, mm -hmm. and the individual is interim, and that's a temporary, so they can continue to be an hourly with overtime, and if it goes to a permanent. Mm -hmm. um, and to where the individual is a permanent hire for an EMS coordinator, mm -hmm. then then if that position is an exempt position, then they would be an exempt. And then they asked if, again, you want to make sure you go through your testing and it, and it met the testing also under administration under salary for exempt. Okay. Um, but they told me that, that we certainly, it's our decision if we wanted to make it salary. Mm -hmm. But in all fairness to Tammy, She's hourly now. She's covering a lot of hours. So okay. So in the future, if she or whoever gets that as a permanent full time, that would be a salary position, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to, as far as I that, understand it, I just want to confirm that because mm -hmm. I thought that was the case we had all along. Mm -hmm. Well, our, our, it, our job description for EMS coordinator is an exempt position. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, but um, Sandy was not just because she was part time. Is that right? She was part time, okay. and yeah, okay. We'll just leave it at that. I just wanted to make sure I got that. Yes, correct. In my head. yep, she was. Omar, are you? Uh, sorry, Omar, are you still with us? I just got a text from saying he had to board his flight. Yeah, I'm about to board my flight, so I gotta. Can we do this? Are we ready to do the vote real quick? So we, can we need, need a, motion. a motion in a second. Okay. We have okay. A motion. I'll make a motion. I'll take Omar's motion. Second. Is a second. Okay. Um, so Omar, what's your vote? Yes. 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 Thank you, Omar. Thank you. All right, guys. I'll see you. Um, so we'll move on to item G, uh, work session on uh, September 16th, so an hour before our next meeting, presentation by the Special Committee Fire EMS Task Force. Yes. Does that work for everybody? Do I have a motion? Is that on the 20th? Yeah. September 16th. 20th, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh. No, it is the 20th, the Tuesday? Yes, the 20th. Okay. okay. It's the yeah. 20th, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. At what time you said? 6.30. Okay. And just for some background, um, they're giving the same presentation to the rural trustees. Uh, I, I believe mm -hmm. the they're going to try to do it the 13th. Um, and then they wanted to also bring it to council for that, the 20th oh. as well. But the trustees will also get the same information. Here, I don't know if you were there the last meeting. Yeah. No, I couldn't make So it. that's what we talked about in the okay. last meeting, just so everybody understands that the who's all involved in, in getting the same information. Um, we have a motion. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So 6.30 on the 20th. Yep, Madam Mayor and Council, I will follow up with um, the committee to make sure that they understand it's set in the time 
mm -hmm. and ask if they need any other additional tools for them. And if there's going to be, are we here next time too on that date? So if there's going to be, can we think about that? Like when we set up and I'm happy to help or if there's something additional we can do so we can see. Cause yep. I will um, discuss with uh, the director here and maybe we can utilize the screen of the stage area. Okay, great. Um, so we'll move on to item H, um, uh, City Council work session October 24th, 2022 at 6 p.m. for Mayor and City Council Board Team Building Program. That sounds fun. That's weird looking to bring Pat Callahan in. Uh, we, since we'll have, since Ashley's new, we'll have another new member. And there won't be any municipal leadership new council training this coming year. That was a good opportunity to bring Pat in. Be kind of a refresher for those of you that just went through it, but will also kind of help our our, our new members. Um, Pat's kind of he sent out a proposed agenda. Uh, we, we can get that out to you to, to kind of take a look. He'll have some questions that he may send out ahead of time. I know one of the first things that he wants, and he just did this for the city of Newton, is he's asked Mayor and Council to the, the first question is, you know, what is your legacy going to be for your time on the council? So it's something they want to start thinking. So that's awesome. Uh, but I think Pat will do a good job. Pat's or actually Pat's got 47 years in municipal government, either working as a city manager, administrator, or a private consultant. He ran the Institute of Public Affairs in Iowa City uh, for a time being after Tim Shields passed away and just He's he, he does a lot of work with mayors and councils and staffs now, and he's done that. So these are similar programming like Sherry and myself when we get our certifications. Mm -hmm. he, um, he, he also uh, teaches the programming and um, okay. so this is like learning how to do city council mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you have a light dinner to start. Okay. And did you say that there are no like trainings available this year for new in this? It's, uh, it is not in- um, It'll be until 24. Yeah. After the next yeah. municipal election. Yeah. Is, is, is when we'll run that. That's what we thought was important. Sure. Just Pat can come in and he can cover some of the important things that you know you and our, uh, our new member are gonna need, but I think he can also, part, part of it is uh, doing some team building amongst the council members and making sure we're on the same page and going forward. Giving you more of a one on one versus in a larger setting. Yeah. And if you, um, council leader, if you have any specific questions or anything, um, you're welcome to, to email Dave and he can pass it on to Pat. So if there's some things in there that you would also like to maybe have him, you know. I have some thoughts on that and I'll yeah, connect I'll, with you and I'll, Pat. I'll shoot that. out the agenda for four up past Thank you so you get a chance to The sooner the better would be great. Maybe that'll cover some of the things that you want to ask. This great. is October 24th, which is a Monday. Is that correct? Yes. Like that's the day? Okay, yeah. just making sure. Yep. Yeah. Kind of have to work around Pat's schedule. Yep. And it says 6 p.m. Like how long do I expect this to a slumber party or like a couple hours two hours i mean um i think mean, you know, uh, um, he, he was kind of proposing dinner at five thirty. Maybe we'll have maybe dinner at six so maybe and, and he'll do the preliminary stuff through through dinner so you know it could be 8 30. okay right, cool we'll i'll just put this on my thank you uh did we already motion no, I no, no. No. do we have a motion to approve motion second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. You opposed? Okay, then we will do that on Monday, October 24th. Um, we'll move on to reports. Um, are you there, Leo? I am here, yes. Okay, I'll start my report. Um, well, number two, um, we told you we gave you a draft report. We still need to make that final. I think the city manager is talking to, or the city administrator is talking to a financial advisor. As soon as we get some information there, we'll provide the final report and probably a contract to start the design. The design of that will take a couple of months and then we'll have to get permitting and construction. Um, the city water director would like to have that on board before West Liberty Foods wants to utilize well number two, or I'm sorry, well number four for um, for their purposes, which that's still an ongoing discussion. I will tell you well, number four has 
for West Liberty Foods is kind of hung up in permitting right now. So that schedule might might match itself pretty well. The uh, well number four for West Liberty Foods has to have a variance to their normal permit. And that's going through the process. I don't know how long that'll take. Well, that's kind of in the well business. In the road business, Rainbow and Maxon are uh, moving along. We put together a schedule today that showed we could easily have a January bid. Again, city administrator told me he was going to have some information from the financial advisor, but we're moving along, assuming we'll have a like December, I mean, I'm sorry, a January bid, which is very good out before uh, any contractors start to fill up their schedule for an April start. That's all I had today. Here we are. Thank you. Um, city staff minutes. Anything? One thing first, uh, Mayor, I forgot to mention um, in Francisco's letter, he uh, was inviting you to attend a special ceremony that day at seven if you're available. If not, he's looking who might be able to attend in your place. At 7 p.m., right? 7 p.m. Yeah, this well, Saturday. Omar Martinez had already asked, and I just didn't know the time. So now I know the time at 7, at 7 p.m. on the 10th. Yes. Okay. Put it in my calendar right now. Mm -hmm. But yes, thank you, Joe. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, staff minutes, any questions? Unfortunately, I forgot to put my name, the first set of staff minutes in there was in my report. Yeah, no, I forgot to put my name on it. So it's okay. I was gonna ask. Okay, so I see like this is the agenda and it says what, but like are there minutes that say, okay, under this, this is what we talked about, or under this, this is what we talked about? So we had asked the superintendents to provide us their um, notes. And the ones that are in the packet are the notes that they provided. Um, no, I did not take the notes because that's what we had asked the supervisors to provide. I was, so I guess, specifically, can... I was thinking like the business one that said, okay, talk about customer service, mm -hmm. recent interactions, successful improvements. I was wondering, like, how did that conversation go? Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's a conversation that we'll have every couple of weeks. So this, this will be kind of an agenda. I've told the department heads if they've got other ideas that they want to include in our agenda to to let us know. Um, we've been providing staff minutes on a uh, every two or every council meeting basis. We're looking potentially in October to going back to doing like a monthly report, having certain department heads submit a report first meeting of the month and some during the second meeting and see how that goes. Okay. The agenda um, was uh, was what we had in place a few years ago. So um, with the agenda, um, the mayor had reached out and um, asked the city manager just for some more organization uh, with that discussion. And um, so as we continue along, we'll kind of see, you know, how it was fresh. So there wasn't a whole lot of conversation. But as that continues with the agenda, then we can certainly make noteworthy um, things or just definitely make sure we're communicating with the supervisors to include those in their in their reports. So, okay. And that agenda may evolve over time. We're, just, we're kind of using one that they've been used to and in the past that we haven't used for a while and see where it goes. And if we need to find other topics that need to be on there, then you'll we'll see that. We'll typically provide you with that agenda for each other. Okay. And I didn't have uh, an opportunity to get a report. Uh, just a quick update. Uh, so we, as I say, we've closed out the fiscal year um, through our financial program. There's um, some additional work that we're doing. Um, today I had an opportunity to get some items uh, over to the auditor. Um, Sherry's been working diligently over the last month uh, producing documents all electronically. Um, so within the hopes by in the next couple of weeks, we'll have enough uh, so they can get a good start on all of our um, audit stuff. And, and then we'll look to schedule a date for them to be in-house uh, to go over those things. Uh, we also had some electric reports that we had to close out. Um, now we get started with um, urban renewal reports. So that will be a report. Um, we'll go over all of our TIF and urban renewal programs. Uh, and we also have the annual financial report that's coming up, street finance reports. Um, 
it's going to be a fun time of nothing but reports over the next few months. So um, we're also headed into uh, the time of the year with the employees where we do the um, annual with their insurance and um, open enrollment and that discussion. So that'll be coming up as well. Um, yeah, and, budget. and then the budget, of course, to, so that'll tap it off. Um, I will have on our next agenda, we will have uh, to set the time for trick-or-treating. Um, I know, Kara, this is always a fun time to talk about the trick-or-treating <laughs> and the time. So um, so I just wanted to let you know, I haven't forgot that we'll make sure we have it on the next meeting so we can be all prepared for trick-or-treating in October. So I have it on good authority that uh, Park and Rec Director Heath is already planning on uh, to utilize the trail as we've done in the past and and then uh, council can open it up to the community if they so choose with some times anything else sherry that on a monday <laughs> we've been busy <laughs> um, i don't think so i think yeah. that's pretty much it everything minus the big nuisance violation yeah. that chief and i are working that's something outside of the clerk portion that i'm doing right now um, the other thing I wanted to let you guys know is um, on the alcohol licenses, one of our people who have an alcohol license did not update their information, so I'm in the process of working with them at this point. Um, it should have been on this one because of the expiration date, but I am working with them to try and get stuff figured out. I'm going to stop by and talk to them tomorrow. So other than that, audit right now is life. <laughs> And the other thing that I wanted to mention from earlier, uh, with mayor's requirements for the utility committee, um, I'm wanting to hopefully schedule, and I'm sorry that Omar's got off before we got to this, but I'm going to try to schedule a committee meeting for the utility folks to talk about two things. One, we uh, just started to review uh, a draft of the new rate study that was done, but we also have a uh, draft for our interconnect agreement, which a lot of people put solar on their homes or businesses here in town. We like to do a uh, committee meeting and then looking probably in October we will have um, the folks from BHMG probably come in on a work session from a Zoom call perspective because they're out of Ottawa, Missouri uh, to kind of walk council through those two things and answer any specific questions that you may have for both of those. Uh, is there any upcoming for September or October like times where City Hall will be closed? I, I can't remember. It's okay. Sure. Nope, uh, not until just, November. Just nope. Okay, so we'll have Veterans Day and um, then Thanksgiving mm -hmm. holiday. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we, we stay open for yeah. Columbus Day. Yeah, we don't close for Columbus Day. Okay. Okay. We, some do, some don't. Yeah. And I wanted to send a big thank you out to all the city staff for their tireless efforts. Uh, and you know, being great stewards of the their job or the community and the city, um, this city streets, the water, this wastewater, uh, all of them public public works. I enjoy the the new alleyways, <laughs> and I see that they're continually working on replacing water lines and so forth, so forth. So, and all the staff at City Hall. So I do want to send out a big thank you because uh appreciate everybody's, you know, what everybody does and their efforts. Agreed. They're all awesome people too. Well it's and fun. one and I promise I will one more thing again with need and um isn't it our downtown looking awesome? I mean yeah. it has been a collaborative effort between our economic development um, with we lead and our our grants and and the state um, funding and I I have to say for the years I've been here um, you know applaud you know and the and the property owners and stepping up and and we're we're turning that downtown into a beautiful place to live and, and shop so um, I just want to say thank you to all of those folks and. And again, with council, I mean, you've made a lot of it possible with that economic development grant. And likewise, I know 
uh, Ken Burks is um, working hard with all of those property owners, business owners, to make sure that um, they're applying for any opportunities that are there. So um, good job to all of those. And Ken's got two more in the pipeline. Yeah. You're a hero. <laughs> and yeah. I, also I may not be saying that, though, when I'm having to do all the reports for it, but no. <laughs> um, we still have one more position open on the Board of Adjustments. So if anybody knows anyone that would be interested, please send them our way. Um, that board has not been fully staffed for quite some time, and I would like to get another person on there so that we may have we've had quite a few meetings this year so um Katie was a good addition yes she, she got she, she got a very interesting first name <laughs> yes and I that will be in my minutes next time I didn't have a chance to put that in there um but I will in the next minutes that I send to you guys I will make sure that I have discussion on that and the minutes from our board of adjustment meeting will be in there as well Thank you, Committee meetings. Uh, uh, do we need, is there updates for the special task force committee report or any other committees that have met that I don't know about? Um, I think we're going to be talking about the task force mm -hmm. next. Maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. we're, we're moving along. They've been going really well. Um, Dave and Lee both have been helping. Um, substantially to to get everybody to understand what it takes, you know, in the background and the behind the scenes. Um, and I think there's, at least from, from my point of view, in just the last few weeks, I feel like there's been a lot more understanding and, and common, like a foundation of, of understanding what it's going to need to um, to move forward with an agency. And so I think that's what Eric uh, will be presenting um, just a little bit more background information about the agency. And he's he took all of his information from our consultant, Pat Callahan. Um, he's already presented the, the uh, presentation to us. And so he just wanted to do it more publicly for the community and for anybody that wants to come. And the task force is meeting next Monday. Next Monday, yep. 6 p.m. on the 12th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we had a meeting over a week ago for the sister city um and that was our very first meeting so it was more of an introduction on what you know who we are and what we want to do and so we've got homework to do and we'll start narrowing down our goals um at the next meeting is that September something we should be like writing a report for, or we just talk about it when we come to the council? Just talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless you, if, if you feel like you need to write a report so you get all of your, right. Yeah. So it's going to be color coded. Okay. <laughs> graphs. We like bar graphs and <laughs> charts. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I would like to make sure, or just to give a heads up uh, to Dana, and actually, I'd like to have a finance meeting. Um, finance community meeting here soon um, to keep moving discussion forward with our cluster. So um, if you both have any availability in the next couple of weeks to do that, I'm guessing my availability is more open than Ashley's with uh, okay. practice. Just send me a few times yep. and okay. block out, you know, one or one and a half hours. Okay. Okay, we got it. Figure it out because I'd like mm -hmm. our goal to meet like you know around the time of our next meeting. So mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.